Hey guys, Jonas here. Today I want to introduce an idea. I just moved and this is a little bit of forest that I have right behind my house. But about 10 days ago, it looked like this. And in just a couple of days, everything melted uh, kind of like this. So I had this idea of how you can, you know, in a simple way, show the transition between seasons. And I think you kind of, you can make some pretty cool stuff with this. And this is essentially what I used. My GoPro with a tripod mount. It's a small piece that you can use to screw this onto a tripod. And I used this. This is a 360 degree time-lapse unit. Uh, it is essentially an egg timer, uh, one hour. Uh, you turn it like this and in one hour it will do a full 360 turn and when it's done <laughs> just like any egg timer I used a rock that I knew I would be able to find and use again when the snow had disappeared. I set the interval to one picture every second, turned on the time-lapse unit, and let the camera run for an hour. Back here in one hour, hopefully the camera is still there. <laughs> and then I did the same thing a few days later when the snow was gone. I placed a small wooden board on the rock to make sure that the timer was leveled, and I tried to make sure that the camera was both angled the same way and pointing in the same starting direction. Okay, so for the post-processing of the images, I'm gonna use the same workflow that we pretty much use for all of our time lapses. I'm bringing the photos into uh, Adobe Lightroom first, and I'm gonna work on uh, the photos here. Basically, I do all of my modifications on uh, one photo, and then I sync the changes to the whole folder of photos, and that will give me the same look on all of them. Well, the same changes, at least, to all of the photos. When doing a time lapse with the GoPro 4, you will only get JPEG pictures, so you won't have the same ability to pull out details in the images as if you were working with RAWs. The other problem is that the GoPro will automatically adjust to light changes, so your pictures can vary a little bit, as you can see here. But for this, it still works pretty well. Take a look at our time lapse tutorial for an idea of the whole workflow in Lightroom if you need to brush up on this. In short, what I have done here is to increase the saturation and most importantly is that I added a graduated filter up here to compensate for the blown out sky and to try and enhance the clouds a little bit more. It really was a pretty crappy day to do a time lapse because there weren't many clouds and there were not a whole lot of stuff happening. But I tried the best that I could to make something out of it. Last thing I do is I export the modified pictures as new JPEGs into a new folder. And then I open up Adobe After Effects to make the time lapses. In After Effects, the first thing I do is I create a new composition. Let's call it Season Time Lapse 01. Now I go up to File and Import. And then I pick the first image in the folder containing my JPEGs that I just exported in Adobe Lightroom. I'm starting with the snowy pictures, and then I do the same thing with the pictures without snow. I then drag the snowy image sequence into my empty composition first. The image size is going to be a lot bigger than my HD video window, so we have to resize the file to fit the frame. And I'm simply just gonna scale it down. I think uh, somewhere around here, 51% looks good. And then I add the image sequence without snow on top, and I do the same thing. Theoretically, they should be close to identical, because I used the same setup for the GoPro camera. So I should just be able to resize this to 51% as well. Alright, now the more time-consuming part begins. Matching the two image sequences. So we have to find a frame that shows the same scene and then try to line up the two image sequences or layers so that they match as good as possible. This takes some time, so I'm going to speed up this process, but in short, I'm dropping the opacity of the top layer so I can see the layer underneath. Then I play with the scale and position to get the major lines or features of the two layers to match. To match the two clips, I suggest picking a spot along the timeline that is fairly close to where you plan to do the actual fading later and somewhere where you will have some distinct features like this big dark blob or some big trees, stuff like that. Again, this is going to take a little bit of time, but if you do your modifications close to where you plan to do the actual fade or merge of the two clips later, the greater the chance that your modifications will stay good. I mean, 
For example, if the angle of the shot is a little bit off or if there's something else that varies, there's a pretty good risk that the two clips won't be perfectly matched for the whole 360 spin. Plus, the time-lapse timers are mechanical and pretty simple, so don't expect extreme precision. I feel pretty good with this. Now I change the starting point of the green layer to where I want my fading to begin. I also double check so that the matching I just did still works here. In this next step, I'm going to be using the pen tool to create expanding masks, revealing more and more of the green layer. I start by creating a couple of duplicates of the green layer and I'm going to have each layer reveal a different part of the whole window. And then I will use the top layer to end it all off by fading in and kind of taking over the whole scene and filling in the rest. Now this process also takes a bit of playing around and seeing what looks good. And the way I do it is that I kind of work on it and then I export a test video and then I go back and I adjust things a little bit more and then I continue this process until I feel pretty happy with it. It is pretty hard to capture all of this in one screen record because there's a lot of trial and error going on and you would probably get all sick of me by the end. But this is how I started. I'm going to begin with the first layer revealing this little tree here. I pick a spot a little bit in on the clip here and then I use the pen tool to click and build a mask around the tree. I play with the feathering to make the edges softer. The mask opacity is also really helpful. I think I'm going to come back and adjust this more later since I'm not quite sure how this will all look in the end. And now I have an outline mask that I have keyframed. I then go back to the beginning of the clip where I want the fading to begin and add a new path keyframe and drag the points in closer to the center of the tree where I want the spreading to start. And this will give the effect that the green of the tree is spreading from the stem out. It looks kind of harsh now, but I think I will go back and fine tune this more later. Next, I add a similar spreading mask on the new layer on top. Remember, these layers are just duplicates from the same layer, so they're all identical. This mask I'm going to add to part of the ground, kind of behind the little spruce. Same thing, I'm just going to do a rough mask of the area that I want to expose first. Again, play with the feathering and mask capacity to make the fading more subtle. Then I take a step back on the timeline and shrink the mask. So this way it will look like it is expanding. And you can of course continue adding new keyframes after the first one you did if you want the mask to continue growing. On the next layer I'm going to add a mask that reveals the sky and the trees in the back. I start by outlining the background that I want to highlight. And then I do the same thing. I shrink the mask to where I want it to start. And, uh, and I feather it to blend it with the initial layer. And more fine tuning will definitely be required later here too. The last layer I'm going to use is going to be the layer that takes over everything. So this fading will start a little bit later and it's not going to be the pen tool. This time I will simply add a mask and click shape and choose the ellipse. I will do the same thing here though and have it start small and then expand to fill the full window. The key here is that I wanted to slowly fade in and eventually take over the whole frame but I want it to happen pretty subtle. So again feathering and especially the opacity here is going to play a big role. Okay that's the gist. At this stage I like to export a first version of the video clip and then get an idea of what I can go back and change. And I'm gonna go back and modify the masks. Definitely gonna change the opacity and I'm gonna play more with the feathering and so on. All this just takes time and how much you change and where you do the changes is all going to be different for all projects. So I'm gonna speed this up and show you the final transition again. So I was going to wait with this video until I actually had something really cool to show you but then I thought about it and I realized that some of you guys might still have snow and I wanted to give you guys a chance to, to do this before the snow melts. So I figured I'll just throw this out there even though I'm not super happy with the uh, 
the time lapses that I got for this video. Uh, but I am going to spend some time over the next few weeks and scout out some new locations in this forest. Uh, and I'm going to try and do this video again later with some better shots. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks for all your support and see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,